Did you know that one in six of the population suffers from a neurological disorder? In a political declaration by the World Health Organization, they stated that uh, diseases in the nervous system account for two, for, is the second leading cause of death in the population, and it accounts for about nine million deaths per year. Um, so uh, people suffering from nervous system disorders has increased over the past several years, which is why I want to share with you a little bit about the nervous system. My grandfather actually was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, which is a neurological disorder. And my mom has shown signs and symptoms of one as well, which has really started my want to learn more about the nervous system. Um, so I want to teach you a little bit about what composes the nervous system, as well as how the neurons communicate and send a signal down the axon. And then we'll talk a little bit about what we can do to support our nervous system. Um, so the nervous system can be composed into two separate systems. You have the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord. And you have the peripheral nervous system, which is the rest of the nerves throughout the body. Uh, the most basic unit in the nervous system is going to be the neuron. It composes of a dendrite, which receives a signal or stimulus the soma, or the cell body, the axon, and the axon terminal. So the myelin sheath is what covers the axon. Um, the Cleveland Clinic states that the myelin sheath allows electrical impulses to travel quickly and efficiently and maintains the strength of the impulse message as it travels down the axon. So now that we know a little bit about what makes up the nervous system, I want to share with you a little bit of how the nervous system works. So this is done by an action potential. So at rest, our neurons are at a negative 70 millivolts. So when we receive a stimulus, it's going to create, and a stimulus is big enough, it's going to reach a threshold. The threshold is around negative 70 millivolts. No, negative 50 millivolts. Once it reaches this threshold, it's going to send that message down the axon. So this is called depolarization. So at threshold, your sodium channels are gonna open, allowing sodium to flow into the cell. This is gonna depolarize the cell or make it more positive, all up until a peak potential. At this peak potential, which is around positive 30 millivolts, those sodium channels are going to close and your potassium channels are going to open, allowing potassium to exit the cell making the cell more negative, which is called repolarization. The cell is going to become a little bit too uh, negative. It's going to hyperpolarize before coming back up to a resting potential. And this is going to happen all along the axon. So now that we know what makes up the nervous system and how these neurons communicate, I want you to think about the last time you burnt yourself. Did you grab that pan and immediately let go? Or did you grab that pan and think, oh, my hand is burning, let me let go? In most cases, you're going to immediately retract your hand without even really processing it. But think about if you had a disruption in the system, you might hold on to that hot pan and really get a severe burn. So what are ways that we can support our nervous system? Well, we can do this by a healthy diet. We can exercise. We can have good quality sleep and we can limit our nicotine and alcohol consumption. The Mayo Clinic also gave a couple of other options as to staying mentally and active. By staying mentally active and socially engaged will help keep your brain and nervous system strong. So as a quick recap, we talked about what makes up the nervous system, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, as well as the neurons. We also talked about how those neurons send a message down its axon, and we talked about ways that we can support and keep our nervous system healthy. So in conclusion, I hope that I taught you a little bit more about the nervous system, and I hope that you can understand what happens in somebody with one of these neurological disorders, which makes up about, uh, about 17% of the population. Um, and I will leave you to let your neurons do the work and process this information. In the meantime, are there any questions? I have a 
question. Go for it. So when when the the signal passes down the axon, mm -hmm. then where does it go from there? Um, it goes to the axon terminals, which another uh, process happens for it to pass through the synaptic uh, cleft and then move on to another neuron, or it attaches to like your muscle or your brain or the effector. Okay. 